Hey, in this video we are going to create this raindrops and water distortion animation using an image, a displacement map, and some JavaScript code. Before we start, a basic knowledge of Pixie.js is required to understand every step we are going to do. Having said that, if you don't know what is Pixie or how to use it, Make sure to watch the tutorial I made in which I'll guide you through the fundamentals of the library that we are going to put in use in this video. First things first, let's create an index file and add a CDN link to the latest version of Pixie.js. That done, let's create a JS file and make an instance of the Pixie application class. As you can see, we have an additional unwanted scrolling space, so let's get rid of it using some CSS code. Now that we have the canvas ready to use, let's create a loader and load the background image. The image I'm using here has the same size as the canvas so it looks centered by default, however if I use another image that has a different size it won't be centered, so I'll add these three lines of code for that reason. The next step we are going to do is to append the sprite to a container to which we are going to apply a couple of filters. So now that we prepared the background, let's add the text. First, we need to create a text style object, then we'll pass it to a text instance. And now that we have our text ready, we need to make it appear at the center of the canvas by doing some simple X and Y translations. As you see, we have the text centered, but the problem is that it is not responsive. To fix that, we need to make the value of the font size property dependent on the width of the screen. The problem is solved, but only when we refresh the page at a certain size, however, it still remains when we resize the window. To fix that, we simply need to add the resize event listener to the window and update the value of the font size property within its callback function. Now let's start with the first effect which is the water movement. To achieve this effect we need to have what is called a displacement map or it can be also referred to as a height map. A displacement map is basically a black and white image that is used to add depth to a 3D mesh or an image in our case 
and by moving it on top of the background image, a wave-like effect will appear. Having said that, let's create a sprite out of a displacement map. I have already downloaded one from an example on the PixieJS examples page and you can do the same. Or you can create one yourself using Photoshop or any image editing software. Then we need to use the displacement filter which is a built-in filter in Pixie and add it to the container. As you can see nothing has changed on the canvas because we still didn't animate the filter and what I mean by animating the filter is to merely move the displacement sprite like we do with any normal sprite in order to create the wave's movement. Now notice that we have some movement but only on top of a certain part of the image which has the same width of the original displacement map width. That said, to apply the effect to the entire canvas, we need to add this line of code, which is essentially the same as the background repeat property in CSS, with its value set to repeat. Now we have the effect all over the canvas, but the waves are big, which makes them a bit hard to notice, so let's scale them down. And there we go. The value of x here is incremented every second, and it could therefore get so big easily. So to prevent that from happening, we need to reset x to 0 when it hits a certain value. I used a random value here, but sometimes you could see it creates a sort of a lag in the animation, so we just need to set the width of the sprite instead as the right part of the condition. Now that we are done with creating the distortion effect, let's add the raindrops animation. To do that we need to use the shockwave filter which is included in the additional set of filters. I'll leave you the link to it in the description below. So the first thing we need to do is to add the CDN link to this set. Then we need to create an instance of the shockwave filter class which constructor takes three arguments. The first argument is an array composed of two elements which represent the x and y of the center of the raindrop. I used the static method random here to randomize the location of the ripple. The second argument is a configuration object, I'll get back to it in a second. And the third argument is time which represents the state of the ripple at a certain time, we'll set it to zero. Now back to the options object, it has a few properties that define the look of the wave. So we have amplitude which default value is 300, wavelength which default value is 160, speed and radius. That done, now let's add the filter to the container and as you see no raindrop animation appears on the canvas because we created the ripple but still didn't animate it, so let's do that. That said, what we are going to do is to simply increment the value of time, which is the third argument we set to the shockwave filter constructor. And there we go, we added the raindrop, but as you may have noticed, it, it's not looping, I'm actually refreshing the page each time to see a ripple. So, to make the animation loop, we need to reset the time property to zero once it reaches a certain value.
The raindrops are now animated infinitely, but the problem here is that they keep appearing at the same spot. To fix that, we need to randomize the center of the wave again after each time we reset the time to zero. Now, to add more raindrops, we just need to create other instances of the shock wave filter and use different values for their properties and their reset times to make the scene look realistic. Finally, as you can see, the code looks a bit repetitive and verbose, so let's clean it up. Notice that in these three blocks of code, we have only two different things, which are the shockwave instance and the reset time. That said, to prevent the repetition, we can create a function that gets the two different values as arguments. Now we'll put the definition of the function at the bottom and simply call it with every shockwave filter instance we want to add to the scene. Make sure to like and subscribe and I will see you in the next video.